nasty. Hello. Is this a bit too on the nose? Are you ready to make some shit? <laughs> Admittedly, this wasn't the original idea for this week. Like a lot of us, I watched the Stranger Things finale. No spoilers, but all I gotta say is... I, I immediately kind of pushed back what I was gonna do this week because I was inspired. I feel like it's been a while since I've done something just completely impractical, sort of fantastical, and kind of creepy. Because I don't know about you, but once July hits, my internal Halloween instincts start telling me. It is time. So, I felt like doing something creepy this week. What is more iconic <laughs> to Stranger Things than a Demigorgon? If you haven't guessed from the thumbnail on the title, we are going to be making a Demigorgon dress. Demi, demi gout gaungen dress a gorgon it's a working title. A lot of the inspiration to make a Stranger Things dress came from Lai Chi, who is a phenomenal cosplayer who I follow over on Instagram. She's making um, an upside upside gown. <laughs> Her pun is um, just a teensy bit better than mine. <laughs> I always forget how <laughs> such an awkward height. Hmm, time to squat. Just so you know, I will be getting a leg workout for the rest of this segment. So if I look like I'm dying, you ain't wrong. Okay. The plan for this Demi Gaungen. Stop trying to make Demi Gaungen work. It's never gonna work. I would really, really love to go really old Hollywood, really dramatic. I've been watching a lot of RuPaul. So, <laughs> so I would really love to make this dramatic silhouette. So I'm thinking like a mermaid shape the cowl. I am planning to do something that looks like a demigorgon's mouth. I think I'm gonna do that out of paper mache. I've been watching a lot of the amazing Johnny from Ultimate Paper Mache. She's everything that I want to be. And I think I have a general grasp on how to do paper mache. Can't promise that I won't be an unstoppable paper mache force going forward and make everything out of paper mache until my entire house is filled with little creatures. <laughs> Slightly more sustainable than using foam for everything like I usually do. For the teeth, there is a thermoplastic that you can buy that is like clear plastic and you just heat it up and form it and then it dries into whatever shape. As far as the dress, base color, but I would really, really love to add some like gross shading. Go in with my airbrush and make it really look kind of nasty and like a demigorgon skin. Just a little nod to that. I don't know. We'll see how we're feeling. <laughs> but what we're feeling right now is a, an intense burn <laughs> in my thighs. So first thing that I need to do is go and get paper mache supplies. I already have some wood glue, which was strongly recommended by <laughs> our girl Johnny, but I don't have any newspaper to make like the base and I need armature wire and tape. Who should probably stay away from impromptu projects? Not me. <laughs> I'm really good at planning. Let us head to Michael and browse his wares. All right, <laughs> so let's go through what I got. A bunch of newspaper. I'm not going to actually paper mache with this newspaper like I did in previous times. <laughs> this is gonna take forever. Johnny uses brown craft paper, so I'm going to use brown craft paper. <laughs> But I did grab a bunch of this for the padding. I went to the gas station convenience store. I don't really know where else one is to buy newspapers these days. Brought them up to the register and the guy was like, people still read this stuff? And I was like, it's for paper mache. He paused for a moment and said, really? You're just gonna trash these. Hold on, put those back. And then he gave me just a big old pile of newspapers from a few days ago. 
and told me not to tell anyone. So here I am telling the entirety of the internet. <laughs> These newspapers are slightly less depressing. We're just gonna be crunching it up into little balls, so maybe it'll be therapeutic. And then at Michael's, I got armature wire, a bunch of masking tape. I probably could have gone boring colors with this, but I figured green might be kind of fun and maybe might make me look like Bulbasaur. <laughs> Ooh, we have fun here. Some of the crystallized warbler stuff. Funny snacks because uh, I'm a sucker. Those snacks that they put near the line always get me. Forget about Guy Fieri. I want Bob Ross's flavor palette. It's probably going to taste like cardboard. This stupid SpongeBob Krabby Patty mystery pack. I just like them because they come with a surprise little bobblehead character. And the two times that I have tried, Nick and I both got bubble bass. I'm kind of working out a conspiracy theory here. We got, who's it gonna be? I feel like this is what people do on TikTok. It is Mrs. Puff. Why SpongeBob, why? I was kind of hoping for Mermaid Man, but that's okay. What was this video about? <laughs> After taking a bite, she realized that she needed to fully commit before she could continue filming, so she took agonizingly long time to fully masticate this infernal gummy. Now that we have all the supplies that I need for the cowl, I am going to drag one of my dress forms in here, and then we can get started building the base of it, which I'm assuming we do with this wire. And we are entirely winging this because obviously I don't really have a pattern or anything. I'm just gonna sort of make it look almost like flower petals. I am not stalling. You're stalling. Here we go. <laughs> Trying to think of the best way to do this. I'm almost wondering if I should just make the petals separately and then put them all together. <laughs> Ain't it fun when I just have no plan at all and just work through it on camera? Yeah, I should probably do that. Never mind. <laughs> Okay, so I take that back. Let's build some little mouth petals. Let's see, Mr. Gorgon. So they got one big mouth hole, five petals. Cool, 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 I can do that. Oh, oh. is that too big? Oh, yes. Curl up and out, sort of. <sighs> like a glove. I'll probably make one more this big, and then two little ones, and then one in back. Okay, now that I've got my petals here, <laughs> try to bulk them up. I think technically maybe I could just start the paper mache like this, but I don't want to do that. <sighs> I want to add like a little bit of bulk. So I'm going to start on a little one so that I can kind of get a feel for what the heck I'm doing. Balls up some paper. Right? <laughs> and you're done. Masking tape. Securing it. Oh boy. Okay. Johnny, you make it so easy. I'm one step closer to being the eccentric grandmother I've always wanted to be. The kind that will inevitably be making little paper mache trinkets and creatures for my future grandchildren. And they'll have to be like, thank you. I love it. And I'll be like, that's right, bitch. Yes. You see what I'm, you smell what I'm, smell what I'm stepping in? I don't think that's a phrase, but okay. Repeat that. Cool thing is that it's still pretty flexible, so I can still, you know, manipulate it a little bit before I actually go in and solidify it with some glue and paper, paper mache, whatever. So I'm gonna keep doing the smaller ones, I think, and then go in for the bigger ones. <laughs> Let's do it. No thoughts, only the Elmo fire gif. 
This is looking pretty dang cool. And alternatively, a Pokemon dress. So this is a back piece. I don't have enough pins in here right now, but this is basically, you can't even see it, but it's gonna go in back like that. You feel me? I am surprised at how easy that was. And it was a little time consuming, but it wasn't that bad. So I figured it's getting really dark and rainy right now. So I think bright and early tomorrow morning. <sighs> Sorry, I wanna spit in my mouth. Bright and early tomorrow morning, I'm gonna come in and do some paper mache. Fun! <laughs> Definitely something a little different that I've never done before. And now that I know the secret, there's no stopping me. Gird your loins. Before today is done though, I think I'm probably gonna make a wire collar piece that these can all attach to. So I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Good morning. I have one question for you. Are you ready? To mache! Cause I am. Tis the time of year where people are very confused as to what I'm drinking. It's a little bit of canal water on the rocks. So as I said yesterday, I did go in and add a collar piece. I went back on my word yet again and decided to just attach everything with wire and tape. Tried it on, it was like very flat and obviously I do want a nice silhouette. So I bent these a little. It's not gonna be very comfortable. Oh, this looks like a defense mechanism that has evolved over hundreds of thousands of years. All right, that's pretty good, right? I need a mirror in here. Whoa, yes, that'll do, pig. Now that we have the shape pretty much figured out, I have um, a little thing of wood glue here, a little bit diluted with water, as per Johnny's instructions, of course. Brown craft paper. I do need to tear into strips. Uh, and because that's not fun content, uh, <laughs> Time-lapse time. Time-lapse time. Behold, my bounty. I probably will end up needing more than this, but I'm gonna start with this. Okay. Um. All right, I guess we'll start. You lather some down. Okay, it's kind of working. <sighs> Can I be done now? <laughs> Am I supposed to like wet this before? I don't know what I'm doing. Oh. Uh, corners are a little tricky. Warm in here. Little mouthpiece number one. I think I'll definitely go in and add some more. It's incomplete, but I think I'm gonna focus on the top of all of these. And then once it's a little bit more dry, flip it over and seal the back and such. But I think it looks okay. It looks like rawhide. <laughs> She is looking demogorgeous. <laughs> this is needing to dry. I don't know how long that's gonna take, but in the meantime, let's go make some teeth. Heat crystal art pellets with heat gun or hot water until they turn glossy and malleable. How? <laughs> uh, okay. Truly cannot say I did not give this the old collegial try. It was molten hot, really hard to work with, and I realized that I needed to make just about a billion teeth, so I said F it. And I moved on to my modeling foam, which is a much more handy dandy process for me that I'm really familiar with, and it worked a lot better. thousand years later. <sighs> oh boy, okay. <sighs> About five billion little teeth. Demigorgon, more like Dentigorgon. Okay, so now that these need to set and dry, I think what I'm probably going to do is go check on my cowl 
any really obvious holes and like places where the paper maybe didn't stick. I'm gonna go in with some quick seal that I always use for my foam projects. Water that down, make everything nice and smooth. Everything just needs to dry overnight. So I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> I am at Joann's and I need to get actual fabric for this dress. Saving it for the last minute? I would never. As usual, I would have preferred to use recycled materials for this project, but inspiration hits and I don't have time to order anything online or go to the thrift store and risk not being able to find anything. I have a day to finish this project, so... Here we are. <laughs> I think I need about five yards. I'm gonna try to go for something where the base looks like the Demogorgon skin already. And then hopefully we will have time later to airbrush and make things look really nasty. <laughs> nasty boy. Ooh. I'm a little nervous. I'm not gonna have time to finish everything today, but here's to hoping. Uh, let's go peruse, shall we? Give him the old razzle dazzle. Sir? Scooch? We're back. Let me show you what I got. So I ended up going with that shiny fabric. I felt like it matched the Demogorgon skin tone pretty well and I kind of liked the fact that it was shiny because like that's kind of funny. <laughs> Demogorgon. So I got five yards of that. According to the pattern that's all that I need. I also got some socks at the checkout lane because I told you. I am a grade A sucker. The little French burgers. And it says bonjour. Et bonjour. Plan to use my airbrush for the dress, but I also got some like spray because I figured maybe for like bigger sections it would be easier to do this. I really do need to get down to work and start making this dress because we are running out of time. <laughs> but I have faith that we can do it. I don't have much time to add anything really too much extra to the dress. Um, I'm hoping airbrushing it will make it look really, really cool and kind of transform it because otherwise it's gonna be a very basic dress. Let's get down to business. Da -da -da. Da -da. Okay, stop letting me stall. This is your fault. <laughs> okay, here are the pattern pieces for the dress. So we have the front, side front, side back, and back. With a very lovely mermaid kind of style at the bottom. Pretty much, it's just four pieces of fabric and then sew them all together and add a zipper in the back. Which is good, because we don't have a lot of time to make this dress. Get to chopping. Well, let's do it. When I to finish this dress up, put a zipper in back. I did get some trim to put around the edges because I knew I wouldn't have time to do a lining or anything. Then kind of just hope this will stay up. I'm just gonna have to make this really tight, but it's also kind of heavy, so I, I don't know. And then we can get to fun stuff like painting. Almost done. Here we go. That took forever. But here it is. We are just two little girls from Hawking. Okay, now that we have this glorious, glamorous dress, it's time to make it disgusting. I am going to go put this on my dress form in the barn and we can start painting, which was keeping me going this whole process. <laughs> Here we go. I don't know if this is gonna work. Oh boy. Alright. Done. I decided to go in and try to paint like a rib kind of pattern. I wanted this to be pretty subtle just to kind of give another nod to the Demogorgon. Okay friends, 
I have no idea what I look like, so um, I apologize. I'm probably very shiny. But now that the dress is drying, I can move on to painting the cowl. <laughs> which I'm very excited about. In addition to finishing up last night, what I did was I glued all of the teeth on. And then I decided I kind of wanted like a gum situation going on and not just the teeth right onto the little flaps. Number one, because they kept falling off, the hot glue wasn't really enough to keep them super sturdy. I went in with the same modeling foam and just smooshed it down in between all the individual teeth. And yes, this did suck and it took me forever, <laughs> but I think it looks pretty cool. So this is what it looks like. Ta -da! A little hard to see because it's all the same color, but basically you have the teeth, then you have gum kind of texture. Now it is time to paint. We're getting nasty. <laughs> Without further ado, let's start painting. The best part. Okay. Not today, Satan. Oh. Gross. I am actively grossed out the whole time I'm doing this. You nasty. What we do for art. <laughs> or our really weird hobbies. <laughs> I did end up going in and repainting all of the tiny little teeth, which yes, also took forever. And because I am a complete masochist, I decided that the gums were a little bit too bubblegummy and I went in and darkened them, which kind of repeated the whole last two steps of this process. I'm really tired. Pretty much came out how I pictured it, which I'm really, really excited about. So with that being said, I will see you in the reveal. surprisingly comfortable, which is nice. And it's really light. I just, I love it. Flap tour. You're welcome. I am pretty happy with how everything came out. The dress is a little wonky up top. Literally every strapless dress I make is always wonky up in the chest. Um, I still have yet to figure out how to fix that. I also made this dress in a few hours, so perhaps given more time, I would be able to figure it out. But for this project, it is totally fine. If I wear this again, you know, I'll do some adjustments, but for now it's fine. I really, really like how the shading came out. It kind of reminds me of my Oogie Boogie dress, which is still to this day, one of my favorite things I've ever done. And I really like how the kind of rib cage thing came out. I think it just gave it just a tiny, tiny bit more interest going on here. The cowl is so fun and I am totally gonna display this somewhere in my uh, studio or office. The one thing I kind of forgot to do, which I think would have been really funny, is to make hot glue strands that kind of look like drool 
or something just to make it really nasty. Again, if I wear this any other time, I'll probably do that. I, I didn't have black gloves, so I had to get a little creative. You know, I added some like veining to make it look like the upside down and it's gonna be a bitch to wash, but you know. <laughs> the things we do for content. Exactly what I needed in this month of July, being a little bit far away from Halloween. I feel like June, July is, is when I start getting the itch, the pumpkin itch. This has satisfied me for a little while. I really truly enjoy taking something iconic and making an outfit or a costume for it. I like taking bits and pieces that can be recognizable and making them into something else. Hopefully you enjoyed this spooky project in the middle of summer. This project kind of kicked my ass, but it was really, really fun. That is it. I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload most Fridays and we have fun here. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. It's hot in here. <laughs> I love summer. I love it. Hellfire is right. Oh, I just stepped on a dead wasp and it was really crispy. There's a painter working on the barn and I'm pretty sure he could probably hear my whole spiel. And Mrs. Puff impression, so I hope he's impressed. Intricate tea kit. I went in the I sent a picture of this to Savannah yesterday and she asked if it was a headband. I quickly realized that it, it is not a headband.